What's up everyone, in this video I'm gonna talk about the Nikon D7000 and see if it's still good in 2022 and so on. And you know what, yes, the Nikon D7000 is still an amazing camera. Released back in December of 2010, this makes it a 12 year old camera. And I can see why a lot of D7000 users are not letting go of it. Getting straight to it, the Nikon D7000 has a 16.2 megapixel CMOS crop sensor. It has 39 AF points, uh, you can bring it down to 11 and I'll show you here. So this is how you go from 39 AF points to 11 AF points. So you just press on the menu, go to autofocus, number of focus points, 39, 11, choose 11, boom, there you go. It has an ISO range of 100 to 6400 with a boost up to 25,600, which back in 2010, it was actually really, really good. It has dual card slots, it has a 3 inch LCD screen, and it can shoot 6 FPS. And going straight to the good things about the Nikon D7000, it has video recording. The Nikon D7000 does do video recording. The LCD screen is actually really nice. If you're coming from the Nikon D90 or even the Nikon D60s, the Nikon D7000's LCD screen is a huge upgrade. And another good thing about the Nikon D7000 is that it has the AF screw, so you can use the Nikon AFD lenses like this one. Another cool thing about for its age is actually the live view. The live view is great. It's a lot better than my Nikon D3100, but definitely nowhere near my Nikon Z6, but it's actually very nice to have. The live view is phenomenal for very tight spaces or if you're trying to compose in a very odd spot, the live view is excellent to compose your shot. It's not a bad thing, it's just me nitpicking it, is the ISO button. Weird placement, but Nikon had it on the D90, the D600, the D750, but I'm glad they moved the ISO button just because I'm much more familiar with the Nikon Z6. ISO button placement, but if you're used to it, it's not a big hassle, especially if you're shooting in auto ISO or in auto mode. For me personally, it's a little bit of a hassle, but you kind of get used to it as long as you're familiar with the button settings. So another bad thing also is that the live view. So when you're changing your settings to higher shutter speed or an aperture, you're not going to see that constantly changing in live view. Compared to my Z6 where you do change the shutter speed and the aperture and the ISOs, you will see the changes. But on the Nikon D7000, you're not going to see that at all, as I can show you here. And another bad thing about the Nikon D7000 is the video AF. It's near non-existent. You can put it in AFF mode, which is autofocus full time, but it will not autofocus continuously. It'll catch focus sometimes, and then when the subject's moving really quickly, it'll lose focus. I'm not saying it's bad for video, but if you're recording a moving subject or a kid running or a moving car or anything that's moving very quickly, it's not gonna be continuously autofocusing on that subject. So just be aware that while it does record video, the AF is not the best. So is the Nikon D7000 still good in 2022? Yes, it is, especially for the price. Depending on the condition you find one in, you can find a decent one for about $300. And it definitely still holds up too. The image quality is actually pretty good, especially if you throw a decent lens on it. If you're using an entry level lens like the 18 to 55, you still get good images, but D7000 is definitely screaming for a really good quality lens. And I'll have a few links below on what lenses I would suggest for this camera. And the autofocus is actually quite fast. I would say it's probably a little better than my Nikon D300S and the D300S is actually really good too. And also the dual memory card slot, coming back to that again, is super nice to have. And just going back to the LCD screen again, it's a lot better than my Nikon D3100. The D3100 was good, but if you're coming from the D3100 to the Nikon D7000, it's definitely a lot better, especially for the live view. Both the D7000 and D3100 was released the same year too. So if you have a Nikon D7000, comment below and let me know what you think. I can see why most users keep theirs. It's definitely still a very nice camera to have in 2022. Like I said earlier, I will have links below on what lenses I suggest you should get for a Nikon D7000 in the description below. So if you like this video or if you have questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try my best to answer those questions. Thanks for watching. Definitely stay tuned for more Nikon D7000 content. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned. See ya.